Welcome to Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is a, a wonderful Sunday. It begins what, uh, what we call Passion Week. Every day during this week, something happened in the life of Christ, culminating on Friday where He offered His life that we might live and um, died on the cross to spend the night in the tomb and to be raised again on Sunday morning. We are so blessed to be a part of a community that wants to remember the story, wants to, to let that story live in us and dwell in us and nourish us. And wants to share that story with others. We've heard the scripture several times this morning already. I want to read it again. I've got a picture of the triumphal entry from one of the movies, many movies that have been made about this. And I just want you to listen to the scripture this morning. You can... You can focus on on the picture there. You can close your eyes and imagine what it would be like to be there yourself. Imagine what it would have been like for the disciples and even for Jesus himself. Let's go back to Jerusalem and hear God's word. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives... Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you. And at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them. And he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. And they brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. And a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna! Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heavens! And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and and asked, "Who, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth, Galilee. Hosanna, save. Hosanna, come. Hosanna, rescue. This is Jesus. The scripture says that he came into the city on a donkey, the colt, the foal of a donkey. What was so important about that? We see in 1 Kings chapter 1 that as David's crown was being usurped by Absalom his son, that David commanded that Solomon be taken to a high place and anointed king over Israel and be brought back into Jerusalem on a donkey and be brought to the throne declared king then we heard Zechariah 9 9 in the scripture this morning verse 5 of Matthew 21 say to the daughter Zion see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey on a colt the foal of a donkey kings rode horses Warriors rode horses. Men of might and power and strength rode horses. But it says in verse 7 that they brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. 
Humble men rode donkeys. The lowly rode donkeys. The poor rode donkeys. Kings rode horses. Jesus rode a donkey. Verse 8, it said, A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from trees and spread them out on the road. This was a way to honor people as they came to and fro, entered a city, entered a town. This was reserved for prophets. Men of God who were loved by the community, who, who shared God's word, they might be honored as they came into the city with palm branches or cloaks laid out on the road. Priests, the high priest at the temple, head of the Sanhedrin, might be honored in that fashion by the religious leaders as he was anointed high priest and was moving toward his throne in the temple. Kings were certainly honored that way. It was like rolling out the red carpet, not too far from Oscar season. The big red carpet and everybody of fame and fortune, everybody who's important in the world, walks that carpet in Hollywood, right? Entertainment tight, think so. You, you know, the president flies into a foreign country and they, they roll the red carpet out to the to the steps coming out of the, the airplane. A dignitary uh, visits the White House and, and the, uh, the entry to the White House has a red carpet on it. It's a way of honoring people. It's a way of respecting people. But as they did that, they shouted, Hosanna, which means save. But what they were looking for, they weren't looking for a prophet on a donkey. They were looking for a king on a war horse. Save us, save us, not from our sins, not from our iniquities, not from our own selfishness. Save us from Rome, Jesus. Save us from the plight we find ourselves in as a nation of Israel. Save us from this taxation. Save us from our religious leaders. See, but Jesus had come to save us from ourselves. And to save us from our sin. The question that it poses in verse 11, uh, 10, it says, The people who had gathered, the people who, who heard the shouting and the screaming, everyone came out of their, their doors and into the streets and opened their windows and were looking down. And they were going, who is this? And why is he being honored? And the response was, well, that's Jesus the prophet. People still didn't know who Jesus was. Today, people don't know who Jesus is. You could, you could ask just about anybody on the street, if you went out and surveyed people on the street here in Louisville and said, who is Jesus? Just about everybody you ask will know who historically Jesus is. But they won't know Jesus. That's the same thing. Who, who is this? What is this ruckus for? Why all the shouting and screaming? Well, that's Jesus, the prophet from Galilee. He was so much more than a prophet. As a matter of fact, Jesus was prophet, priest, and king. It's called the threefold ministry or the threefold office of the Christ. Jesus was, in fact, prophet. He was, in fact, a priest, a rabbi, a teacher. And he was, in fact, a king. The only person in all of humanity that assumed all three offices. Samuel was a prophet and a priest, but he was not king. 
David was a king, but he was not a prophet or a priest. Solomon, wise beyond all others who'd ever walked the face of the earth, was simply the king of Israel. Jesus walked in all three. In his humanity and in his divinity, he encompassed everything we need as a Savior, prophet, priest, and king. Only the Messiah could hold these offices together at the same time and do it perfectly. As a prophet, he speaks truth into our hearts. He lets us know when we are wrong and when we are far from God. He rebukes us, he corrects us, he challenges us. He speaks truth as a prophet did. As a priest, he offered sacrifice for our sins once for all. That all might come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Not year in and year out. Not every time that something goes wrong or someone sins. He offered sacrifice for our sins as the high priest on the cross on Calvary. And as a king, he rules above all other authorities that have ever been, that are currently in power or that will ever be. Jesus is prophet, priest, and king. See, there is no other to seek for truth than Jesus. He is the pinnacle of truth. He is the author of truth. He is the speaker of truth. If you need truth, go to Jesus. There is no other to seek for absolution, forgiveness for our sins, other than Jesus. He is the only one who can forgive you. He is the only one who paid the price to be able to forgive you. And there is no other to seek to rule or reign in your life than Jesus. We put so many things up into the throne of our life. So many items, so many idols, so many people. We set up on the pedestals of life. And we look to them as our source of strength and authority. But those pedestals, time and time and time again, crumble and fall before us. Jesus says, I am the one that can sit on that throne in your life. I am the one that will not crumble. I am the one that will not fall. I am the one that will not be destroyed. I am the one that will not fail you. Men and women will fail you. Husbands and wives will fail you. Children will fail you. Bosses will fail you. Teachers will fail you. Jesus will not. He is prophet, priest. And King. See, there is no other. There is no need for another. There is only one who is all and is in all. Colossians chapter 3. He is the one we hold on to. He is all we need. That's what Palm Sunday means to us. As we start Holy Week this week, as, as we take time, hopefully, each day and meditate on the happenings of, of the week of, of the life of Christ, let us remember that as He proceeded into Jerusalem, as He, as he rode in on the colt and the foal of the donkey, as the prophet Zechariah said the Messiah would come, recognize that He is all you need. Everything else will fall away. Everyone else will fail you at one time or another. 
but Jesus will not. He doesn't promise you a perfect life. He doesn't promise you a rose garden. He doesn't promise to give you everything you want like a heavenly Santa or the Easter Bunny. But what He says is, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you always. I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death with you. That's why we fear no evil, for He is with us. He is all we need. Our prophet, priest, and king. So as we begin Holy Holy Week this week, my challenge to you is to keep Jesus on the throne in your life and to show Him off to everyone you come across. You know, I've used this illustration before, but you get that new car and you just want to show everybody your new car. Oh, look what it does and look what it has and, and look what it can do. Or you get that fancy new piece of jewelry and you're showing it off to everybody at the office and everybody at school. Look what I got. Look how shiny it is. Look how sparkly it is. Or Elizabeth shows off all her shoes from Zappos. Let's show Jesus off this week. Let's show others that He's important to us by making others important to us and loving them. Through Jesus. Amen.